I bet you don't stay on my lap though. Do you want to stay on mommy's lap? No. Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. And welcome to Wednesday. Today, this Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about my top five Jamie Oliver cookbooks. So over Vlogmas, I did a little bit of vlogging. I talked about cooking and things like that. Um, and a few people were like, oh, we'd be interested to hear a bit more about cooking. So I thought throughout this year, it's not a series as such, because I'm just going to sort of go, like, go, go with it. Um, I thought throughout this year, I would show you some of the cookbooks that I've got, some of the cookbooks that I use a lot. Um, I've turned vegetarian this year. So I think going forward, I'll probably show you some of the cookbooks that I use now that I'm a vegetarian. These are cookbooks that I've used throughout my life um they're probably like they're not my five favorite but when i was picking out i thought i'll pick a top five of my favorite cookbooks um and then when i picked them three of them were jamie oliver ones i was like let's just do a top five jamie oliver one and then throughout the year i'll do some more as well so we'll start with these so jamie oliver for those who don't know is a um, celebrity chef in the uk although i'm pretty sure he's all over the place um he is one of my idols he left school with no not many qualifications and and um, had been brought up in a pub with his parents who um, and who taught him um, taught him cooking um, he was then discovered on a program um, at the set of the River Cafe in London um, where he was a junior chef um, and he's just so enthusiastic about food everything he cooks I'm really interested in I think his programs are really accessible I think his recipes are really accessible particularly the books that he's had published like later on the most recent books he's worked with nutritionalists so it's really easy to see what is on there what you need to eat um, he's got great bits at the beginning and end of books um, about mindfulness about like exercise but not in a preachy way just in a hey this is what we should be doing this is what we're gonna do um, and I just find his recipes the best and the easiest and I always reach firstly for a Jamie Oliver book um, when I'm looking to cook so I've got five of my favorite here he's got about 14 books now I think it might even be more than that um, I've got his most recent one actually that it probably says how many he's got but hey he's got about 14 cookbooks out now um, and these are my top five. So the first one is um, Jamie's 15 Minute Meals. So this is the book that David and I go to whenever we want, whenever we don't know what we're having for dinner. So quite often um, we, we used to plan throughout the week. We need to get back in the habit of doing that. Um, but quite often, eh, I'm going to get comfy. Um, quite often um, what we'll do is we'll flick through this. We've got a bit of a game that we play. Yeah. <laughs> so this is um, in, in this book in particular. So I'll talk through this book, then I'll tell you about the game that we play. So this book is set into sections. They're all 15 minute meals. Now I'm, I've consider myself quite a proficient chef, um, chef, cook, like I'm pretty good at following a recipe and I'm always pleased with the results that I get. It's rare that I'd cook something and, and, and not be happy with it. Um, I'm quite good at chopping. I've learned quite a few knife skills. I'm quite good. I'm pretty good at like n knowing by eye what a tablespoon is, what this is, what this is. But I would say it would be tough to cook many of these recipes in 15 minutes. These are quick recipes, which is great. Also, I love cooking. I don't want it, something to be over in 15 minutes. David and I do these together. We could probably do them in 15 minutes. But I think this is probably a bit of false advertising. Not in a negative way. They're just quick, delicious and wonderful meals i think this is the best book that he's ever released um and i've cooked almost everything out of here um, and just loved it it's set out um the first section is set out into the meaty side of things so chicken beef uh pork lamb then we get into the bits that i'm allowed now um fish actually i've just realized david's cooking dip so that that bit's me and then um i've just realized david's cooking me dinner tomorrow night and i've got to pick something i might pick something here fish pasta soup sandwiches um vegetarian and all of them are delicious i could open this at any page and be like yeah that's really nice so fish backs with mushy peas and tartar sauce happy cow burgers those happy cow burgers are amazing they're vegetarian burgers made out of um mixed beans and frozen broad beans and um they're all really really easy accessible delicious recipes um, and I really, really love it. So the game that David and I play is that one of us will pick five recipes out of here that we, that we wouldn't mind eating for dinner. Then the other person goes back and knocks it down to three. So I'd pick five, David would knock it down to three, then I'd pick like my number, then I'd knock it down to two, then David picks the one that we go for. 
So really, if you're conniving and sneaky like me, um, <laughs> um, then what you do is you pick the one recipe that you probably know that David would go for and then four crap ones and then eventually you're going to get what you want for dinner. So yeah, and um, sometimes I wonder, maybe I am a sliver in. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what we play with that. But this is really, really good. Also, for, for cooks, uh, for people who want to get into cooking, I think this is a really, really good place to start. I think you'd be really impressed with the results from this. There's a Swedish meatball recipe in here which isn't taxing at all. You can make the Swedish meatballs up to like the day before you need to cook them and everything. Um, and when I first taste it, I was like, this is like bloody restaurant food. It's so impressive and and I love making that recipe for someone. Can't eat it myself anymore, but I do love making it. How do you make vegetarian Swedish meatballs? Anyone know? Anyone know? So that's the first one. Let's have a little sip of my drink. Lovely. So the next one is probably the first book that got me into cooking. So this is one of his, this is published a long, long time ago. This is Jamie's Ministry of Food. See the thing about these, they don't tell you the year they were published, do they, old cookbooks? Don't say. Oh no, hold on. 2008, so this was published eight years ago, um, and I got this one year for Christmas when I was living at home with my parents. Um, and I used to, with, with my um, my pals, I used to run what I used to call a soup club. So on a Wednesday, I think, I used to have uh, friends would come around and I would make them soups, and I used to make the soups out of here. So um, this has got a really, really good soup section. So the, the whole message of this book was that these have got easy recipes in here that you could learn and then go on to teach other people. So it's got a section in there where it says, oh, I take a pledge that I will learn one recipe from this book and pass it on. There are still recipes from this book that I, I could cook from scratch, that I could cook out of my head because I've done them so often. So sweet potato and chorizo soup, that was one that I did loads and loads and loads. There's a rice dish in here um, that I would cook all the time. A chopped salad that I would cook all the time. Um, the fish pie is a great recipe. Oh, the mackerel pate, that was a, a revelation. The first time I made mackerel pate, I couldn't believe how delicious it was. Um, these are really good starters. What I will say about these older books is that the newer books, so from Jamie's 15 Meals onwards, um, they have how um, the the nutritional information. So I don't believe, he, he may well have worked with a nutritionist on, nutritionist on these books, but those ones have it published. But um, yeah, this is a really, really, again, a really, really good one for a starter. Like I, I just, this really makes me feel nostalgic when I look through here because it just reminds me of all the times I used to make the soups and things like that. But really good soup section in here um, and a very, very good, I believe a 20 minute section at the beginning as well. Um, and yeah, I remember when I first got this, I was very excited and it's sort of like the book that got me into cooking. Um, so yeah, very good. Ministry of Food, Jamie Oliver. All by Jamie Oliver. This is when I'm going to take a sip of drink time. The third one is one that holds a very dear place in my heart. So this is Jamie's Great Britain. This is, I mean, all of these books are pretty bashed up. This is the most bashed up of all. And as you can see, I think I've probably talk, spoken about this on my channel before, all these pages are turned over. So a few years ago, it wasn't last year, was it the year before? So maybe two or three years ago, I think maybe three years ago, um, my New Year's resolution was to cook everything out of this Jamie Oliver, uh, Jamie's Great Britain book. I got this for my birthday, like a long, long time ago. Let's look, when was it published? 2011. So I got this for my birthday like a long time ago and had never cooked anything from it. And I kept looking, and I often look at this book and like, God, all of this is gorgeous. Like there really is some delicious, delicious foods in here, like all sorts. And it's all based, it's all Great Britain. So if you're into like locally sourced produce and things like this, this is a really good book to utilize that. Um, and I quite often pick this book up, look through it and be like, Fwah! that's all gorgeous. Um, and one year, as my New Year's resolution, I decided to cook absolutely everything out of it. Now, I didn't quite manage it. I think I managed like 80% of it. But I look through this book with such fond memories. I can literally open it on any of these pages and see something that I've cooked and remember when I did it. So, for instance, this is a salad. So, it's got bacon in here as well. It's got starters main, Sunday roast dinners. It's got um, pub classics. It's got something a little bit different. It's got veg. It's got dessert, it's got soups, 
it's got salads, it's got everything. Um, but yeah, I can look through here and, and, and find any memory. So for instance, like this is the sour cranberry bakewell. I made that for my book club at work. Um, one, and I remember, because I used to take a photo of them and put them on my Instagram. So if you go back through my Instagram, you'd probably be able to see it all. Um, and I remember I didn't even get a photo of that because we all just gobbled it up. Uh, let's have a look. What other memories have we got here? Oh, Empire Roast Chicken. So I remember making this for... Um, my friends Kate and Alex got married um, on the 15th of February a few years ago. So however long they've been married is how long ago I did this. Um, and my my best friend Ryan and his girlfriend stayed with us the night before, which was Valentine's Day. So on Valentine's Day, we just spent the whole, like we just ate this. And um, I remember just having a lovely Valentine's Day. He Heavenly Potted Shellfish, I made that for starter on Christmas Day that year. So yeah, it's just full of memories for me. And it was just a really fun thing to do. If you're into your cooking and you fancy it, I, I haven't done it this year I attempt I've, I've never had the success rates I did with this book because I think where I'd sort of like had such a, a look, look at this book relationship I knew the things in there I wanted to cook I tried to follow it up um, the year after with Save with Jamie and then the year after that with Jamie's 30 minute meals but I never had a, a success as this but it was such a nice thing to do and I really do love looking back on these things and being like oh yeah I remember making that and I will do it again in future um, but I had lots of reading resolutions and things but yeah absolutely loved this memories for me and really really love it and I love how bashed up it is like it's completely bashed up but I really love that drinky so the fourth one is quite a new book of his and it's um Jamie of everyday superfood now it's a bit glary so I do apologize underneath though it's amazing look at that Charlotte bought these for me um, when we moved into our our new crib last year but um I've actually David's mum had it and um I've, I've looked through hers so so these are the healthier recipes um and looking at things that are um, a, a superfood. So it, it's set again into sections of breakfast, lunch and dinner. And then I think there's sort of like a sweet treats um, section at the end. So I find this very help, helpful if I'm trying to be healthy. Um, there's a lot of vegetarian recipes in here. So before I became a vegetarian, David and I would um, have um, one or two meat free meals a week, which we often would find in here. It's got great snacks in here. Um, the only thing I will say is that I find the portion size is a bit small in this, um, so sometimes I feel like I have to do something. But if you're supposed to be eating healthy, you shouldn't be eating like Lauren and David size portions of things. Um, but this is this is this has got a, a recipe in here that David is like his signature dish that he loves cooking, um, and that's pes lemon pesto crusted cod with um, baby roasted baby new potatoes and um, green veg. And that's like if David's cooking dinner, the first thing he says is, "Do you want the?" Do you want the cod? And it is delicious. It's really, really nice. So this is really good if you're looking for healthy eating, particularly I know this time of year, people are looking to be a bit healthier, um, new start in January, etc. But I really would recommend this book. And I think it's it's got some really like, the faux photography, David Loftus, um, whose Instagram account I will link down below. He does the, um, he does the food um, photography for Jamie Oliver. I'll link all of Jamie Oliver's bits down below if you haven't heard of him, but I'm sure you have. Um, and his, his food photography is just amazing. But yeah, this is, this is a really good con. Oh, we've had that before. Delicious squash dal with special fried eggs and poppadoms. Nice. Very nice. Lots of fish in here as well. So this is really good for me. This is very, very good. So although that's healthy, on the flip side is this book which is Jamie's Comfort Food, Scrumptious Happy Classics. So this is a complete treat book. This is really full of treaty, delicious things. Um, so he did this um, a few years ago and then bought out Superfood since then. And I think this was sort of like his last hurrah. He seems to have gone down the, the Superfood and the healthy eating route. But this, like, this is a book that when you look for it, you're like, I get the similar feelings when I'm looking through this as I do with Jamie's Great Britain. So I wouldn't be able to cook my way through this now because there's far too much meat in here for me who not eating meat anymore but yeah there's some really delicious things in here katsu curry i've made a few times that's really nice and um, they're all really like investment pieces there's not much in here oh i made that for breakfast on uh, christmas eve huevos rancheros um it's got some pasta recipes it's got but it, it's sort of just it's set out like there's there's bacon and cakes at the end but aside from that it's just deliciousness the whole way through there's not you couldn't open this and not find something you don't want to eat unless you're not eating meat like me, but let me have a look. Salt and pepper squid, oh, I love squid so much. I might make that soon, actually. Um, yeah, this is just a real, real treat. So those are my five favorite Jamie Oliver cookbooks. Let me know if you're, I'm gonna have another drink. Very thirsty today, very, very thirsty. Oh, I forget how heavy cookbooks are. Let me know if you are into cooking and if you are into Jamie Oliver. Let me know which of his favorite cookbooks 
Um, which Let me know which of his cookbooks are your favourites. Um, as I said, he's got a whole host. I have like most of them on my shelf over there, but these are my top five. Um, let me know if you like the idea of this as a video that might happen again. Um, as I said, I'm hoping to do one on um, vegetarian cookbooks coming up and also just other cookbooks that I've got that I've enjoyed. But this first one, I just wanted to do Jamie Oliver because it's so... I just really adore him so much. These books are really, really heavy. I'm going to hold these up now. But these are my favourite Jamie Oliver cookbook. That is going to garrot me. Um, and I will see you all again soon for another booktube video.